Hello video editors, in this tutorial I'll show you how to make this split screen transition in Adobe Premiere Pro. This one is inspired by one of the many excellent drag and drop transitions from the Film Impact plugin pack. A few months ago I made an entire dedicated video about this pack, which I will link at the end of this video. In my opinion, this is still the best transition plugin pack for Adobe Premiere at this moment. But I also understand that many of you don't want to or cannot pay the monthly subscription fee. So that's why I will show you how to build one of them without the need for any plugins. Before we move over to Premiere, first a quick shout out to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. Storyblocks offers a massive collection of high quality stock videos, images, music tracks and sound effects. And besides that, they also offer many video editing templates like this smooth transition pack that I used for this sponsor ad. To make this all more affordable, you could go for a plan based on your needs. You could go for audio or video only or all access. Follow the link in the video description and check out Storyblocks and then learn how to get unlimited access to their constantly growing library. Ok, now it's time to move over to Premiere and show you how to make this split screen transition. Inside Premiere I've got these two clips from Storyblocks ready on the timeline. I will start by cutting the first clip at the point where I want the transition to begin. So I'll switch over to the Razor tool by hitting the C key and then cut the track. Then switch back to the Selection tool by hitting the V key. And then I will duplicate the cutoff part by holding the Alt key combined with the left mouse button and then drag it one track up. Now that we've got two copies we can select the bottom one and then move over to the Effect Controls panel. In the Opacity section I will select this pen icon, the Free Draw Bezier tool because we're going to create a mask. But first we need to zoom in in the program monitor so that we can add the mask points right outside the frame. I will start in the left bottom corner, then go to the right bottom corner and then add a point in the left top corner. And finally I'll go back to the left bottom corner to finish the mask. We can now do the same steps for the top clip. So I'll select this one on the timeline and then enable the free draw bezier tool and then make a similar mask. Only this one will be the opposite, so this means that I'll start in the right bottom corner. And then add the mask point in the right top corner. Then move to the left top corner and add a point. And finally finish the mask back in the right bottom corner. Let's now zoom out in the program monitor. And then if I turn one of the layers on and off, you can see that we've separated the clip in two halves over two different layers. And if you look closely, you can also see a line in the middle, and that's because the mask has a feather value of 10 pixels by default. But if you turn this down to 0 on both layers, then the line should no longer be visible. For the next step we need to nest both parts, because the effect that we're going to apply will not work correctly if we don't nest them. So to nest the clip we need to right click on the track and then select nest. I will name this one top. And I'll do the same for the bottom part and we'll name this one bottom. Perfect, we can now move over to the effects panel and search for the transform effect. We need to apply this effect to both nested layers. And then I'll select the bottom layer and then move over to the effect controls panel. In there I'm going to enable keyframes for position by clicking on this stopwatch icon here. Then I'll move this first keyframe with the standard values to the beginning of the transition. For the first animation I want to move the bottom part to the left bottom corner and then hold for a second. I will not just randomly add new position values here, but I'm going to calculate the exact position. This is a 4K sequence, so the center is 1920 by 1080. Let's say that I want to move 20% to the left bottom corner. Then I must multiply the horizontal position value 1920 by 0 0.8, which is 1536. And then I need to multiply the vertical value 1080 with 1 1.2, which is 1296. To understand why I multiply with 1.2 or 0.8, you can look at the numbers on the rulers next to the frame. If you move to the left on the horizontal axis, you can see that you need to lower the value. So if you want to move this 20%, you need to multiply this with 0.8. And if you move down on the vertical axis, you can see that the value gets higher. So this means times 1.2 if you want 20%. Ok, so now we've added the second keyframe for the bottom, it's time to do the same for the top part. It's important to keep the playhead at the same position because we want the animations for both parts to be in sync. So let's select the top part and then move over to the effect controls panel and enable keyframes for position. I'll move the first keyframe to the beginning and then create a second keyframe by changing the horizontal and vertical values. And in this case we need to multiply 1920 by 1 1.2 and that's 2304. And then we need to multiply 1080 by 0 0.8 and that's 864. 
By adding these keyframes to the top and bottom, we've created the first part of the animation. It's time to add the second part. I'll start by moving a couple of frames forward and then copy the second keyframe with Ctrl or Command C. And then paste this at the point of the playhead by pressing Ctrl or Command V. Let's do the same for the bottom layer. I will copy the second keyframe and then paste this on the position of the playhead. Then I'm going to move a couple of frames forward again and then change the position values so the bottom part will move out of the frame. And this means 100% instead of 20. So I'm going to bring 1920 down to 0 and 1080 to 2160. And then I'll move this keyframe to the end of the transition. We'll do the same for the top part, but here the values will be 3840 by 0. And I will also move this keyframe to the end of the transition. Let's give this a playback and see what we've got so far. In the next steps we're going to make the animations a bit more smoother. We can do this by adding ease in and ease out properties to the keyframes. So for both sets of keyframes we're going to add an ease in to the last keyframe and ease out to the first keyframe. And if we now have a look at the keyframe graphs you can see these nice curves. This means that the animation will go a lot smoother. Besides changing the keyframes, we will also disable the option to use Composition Shutter Angle. And then also change the Shutter Angle to 180. And by changing these options, we've now added some motion blur. Let's give this a playback so you can see the difference. And then take a look at the bottom part, which now should have motion blur. Maybe it's a little hard to see this way, but if I now pause the video, you can clearly see the difference. Okay, let's now also make the same adjustments to the top part. So first start by changing the keyframes to ease in and ease out. And then disable the option to use composition shutter angle and set shutter angle to 180. Okay, so now both parts have the ease smooth animation and also motion blur enabled. And now all we've got left is moving the two parts one track up and then place the new track underneath the transition. This way the track at the bottom will be revealed after the split screen transition. If you want, you can save some of the steps as a preset. You could save both masks by saving the opacity section as an effect preset. And you can also save a preset for both transform effects, including all the keyframes. And if you use the scale option for the effect preset, you can use this preset on any transition length. So this means that in total, you should have four presets for this transition. The first two presets are for the mask and can be applied to the two layers. And then you should still nest both layers. And then apply the other two presets for the transform effect. So if you use presets for this transition, you can really do this in a matter of seconds. If you want to learn more about effect presets, I've made an entire dedicated video on this topic, which I will link in the video description, so check that out. Anyway, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please like the video or leave a comment below. I would really appreciate that. And finally, as always, thanks a lot for watching and I wish you all a wonderful day.